This young man's name is Evans. He, his name, the name of his channel, YouTube channel is Evans from Kenya. I watch him, uh, well, as I say, I've been watching his channel for, I don't know, maybe a year or so. And one of the reasons why I watch his channel is because he is challenging the 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 status quo of of of, of YouTubers in Kenya in all of Africa, really. He brings up subjects that will challenge people, people's thinking about, about Africa, about themselves actually, about us as diasporans and Africans as Africans, and how we diasporans, as they call us, Africans born abroad and Africans born on the continent, how we treat each other and how we should be treating each other. This video is about what's going on in Kenya now. And I would like you to go to his channel and see the whole video. I'm going to play a clip that I made from, the, from him. But I want you to go to his channel and see it. And I need all kids. I, I wish that all Africans watch this. Even diasporans watch this. People in America, Brazil, London, Sweden, Germany, all Africans watch this. Because what's happening in Kenya needs to happen throughout Africa, from South Africa to Egypt, from Senegal to Somalia, it need to happen. There are some countries in between who don't need the government to be removed because their governments are fighting for principles that Kenyans are now discovering, not not discovering, but beginning to stand up for. <laughs> I was gonna mention ECOWAS, but <laughs> oh my goodness, it's a shame what some old thieves can do and people will accept. But anyway, go listen to Kenya. Uh, Evans from Kenya. Evans from Kenya. E V A N S from Kenya. Madam Speaker, what is wrong with our company, our country? We call it a company. We shareholders. Our country is not a company. Our company is Kenya, which is a state. It has 50 million people who all expect and demand certain services from the state. We, the politicians in this house, I heard my colleagues speak. I am so happy that we are now telling each other the truth. We are the ones who carry militias. We are the ones who go and carry cattle rustlers. We are the ones who have got companies that are doing business in government departments. We are the ones who are stealing the money. Look at the national government, I'll call it down, bring it down to the National Assembly. We must begin to look at issues like CDF. We must look at the Women Fund. We must look at the structure. Do we need all the people who have been given offices? Why, are, I've been asking this publicly, why are governors running county governments as if they are private companies where they are stealing money, buying properties abroad, driving such big vehicles, including ourselves? 
Why, when did we decide that I must drive a car which is 4.8 cc? That are 3,000 cc is not good enough. When our children don't have medicines, when our women are not giving birth, when we can't feed our, class, our children, when we buy fertilizer, we deal on it, we sell some of it, we sell mchanga. We are bringing it maize when we are supposed to be planting maize and giving uh, farmers fertilizers and giving them funds so that we can get production and increase that so that we create jobs for our people. It is we politicians who won't buy two million tons, two million metric tons of maize. We come and sell. We bring three million metric tons of sugar cane. Mumias is dying. Chemilil is dying. Sony sugar is dying. Those are factories that used to employ people. Who are the biggest dealers of investment companies in Kenya? We, the political class. What happened to Kenya Airways? Look at it now. Smelly, filthy. It was the pride of Africa. Who runs Kenya Power? Why are we not told who are the owners of the independent power suppliers of this country? Why are we not being told who owns our national parks? But you hear money is being stolen by none other than the elites and the political class. These people out here are tired. These people are tired. I was crying this morning today because we are messing up a good thing. We are messing up this country. Who wants to be a refugee? And there's enough for you people to eat, so long as you eat with manners. The revenue we collect is enough to run eight African countries, Kenya, Rwanda, Burundi, Tanzania. You go to Congo. You go to South Sudan, you go to Somalia, and you go to Ethiopia. That's what our good damn budget is. Just manage it, don't steal it. A few people are stealing too much. These kids out here, they know everything. They know your houses. They know where your kids go to school. They know which properties of land you have. Why must somebody have four million acres of land to his name? What happened to our mentality that we pretend and run to churches talking about Christianity, how Jesus... Do you understand what you are dealing with? The people out here don't even believe in God anymore. The people out here are tired of the lies, the religious organizations. And I have to say this, I'm a Catholic. I was so happy I saw the purple no show. Talk about the issues of a country. Let us forget that we can run this country as tribes. Let us accept that there is a new sheriff in town. That sheriff is the GNC. They are partyless, they are tribeless, they don't have money, they just have bundles and a phone. And they'll stop this country to move. I would like to plead with the members of this house when it comes to looking at what role our committees are playing. Look at what happens. I want to thank my brothers uh, Sifuna, uh, my brother Chirarge. I want to thank uh, Madam Dulo. These are, if many of you may not know, we've never discussed it here. How many times we've been threatened that we are raising issues about county governments losing billions? And, I mean, who doesn't know how many governors own apartments and houses in Kilimani Road? Each one of them owning an apartment costing 1.5 billion shillings. Why didn't the fool just go and build a hospital where he comes from? How I wish we stole the money and put it at home. Some of them are going to Dubai. People are going to America. You see on social media. I just bought me. I just saw somebody commenting saying that you oh, the senators have nothing to do. I want him to tell me how he bought a Bentley and he's an MP. Explain to me, how does somebody, I mean, the truth is, I'm born with advantage and privilege. That is the truth. I saw my father driving a big car when I was a small boy. That is not what drives me. What drives me is how do you get a member of parliament driving a Mercedes that costs 49 million shillings and we are watching and that is normal and it is okay. And it is okay. Shame on us. Then we make sure this money doesn't go to the schools. We make sure that hospitals have no money. We start building hospitals now. We want the poor people to come to those hospitals. Poor people can't come to Nairobi Hospital. They can't come to Aga Khan. They can't, some of them can't afford Kenyatta. You saw the other day, Kenyatta has a debt of 6.6 .6 billion. The Eldoret Hospital, Eldoret KTRH, has a debt of 3.9 billion. When you ask, they tell you we don't know where the money went. Are we fools? 
do we need to buy houses which have got 15 bedrooms and drive 19 cars and put them in your parking lot and you want 10,000 acres of land? You want a ranch? You fools, you want to buy a ranch in Australia. This is where we are. We keep blaming the police. The policeman cannot do anything. Have we ever gone as a city to go and see where the police lives? How he takes his kids to school and his salary is 19,000. And this house has to start thinking about those things. We guys must begin, and we ladies and gentlemen in this house must begin to agree that we can reduce our salaries, that we can drive smaller cars, that we can wear kaundas. In fact, the only thing I'm very annoyed about the president, I'm the one who started wearing kaundas. Now he has given kaunda a bad name. I want Kenyans to love kaundas the way I love them. Um, a very sad person. And yet, indeed, I'm also deeply happy because it has been something that I've been dealing with at a personal level in terms of my responsibility as a legislator. If I had my own reward, I would give them. Because when everything else seems to have been failing, some of us have been talking to them. And all the time, we feared for their lives why not because anything would happen but the costs were too high second issue that came up madam speaker was after by the year 2002 there was another 20 years then you come to 2022 i mean to 2002 is when kibaki was elected is when we have a referendum is when we have a new constitution and then we say kenya is now on the right path after that madam speaker we did not follow the letter of the constitution what many of us have never understood is that your democracy is as valid and as reasonable and as verifiable and is implementable as the people who are willing to follow and implement that constitution we have completely failed our people and that is why when the elections took over and we had challenges and that is why when you look at our country and the crisis that has come up when you look at the issues which are bedeviling our country you realize that we are on quicksand and that is why when the elections took over and we had challenges and that is why when you look at our country and the crisis that has come up when you look at the issues which are bedeviling our country you realize that we are on quicksand unless you have old men and old women, people of dignity and decency, people who have got wisdom, people who are not greedy to fix this country. We will not have a country very soon. Madam Speaker, I've served as an assistant minister. I went to Cote d'Ivoire, sent by President Kibaki to one visit, President Bagbo. I got into his house, he was wearing a vest. That time the military was around him. He was being deposed. Two weeks later, he went home with his wife. They were half naked. Those sins are not sins that Africa should be proud of. Madam Speaker, our country has broken down. Our country has challenges. But before I go to how, in a short notice, what we can do, I would like to ask the president, and I asked him the other day, the children who died and the children who are in the prisons, please remove them. Those who have died, I want to ask this house, the Senate, let us make sure that those children get a state funeral. Those who are not criminals, these are children who had reached a dead end. I bribe the courts, and I want to talk about the judiciary. We respect you. We know that you are most of the time under the pressure. We know there are certain things which you can even be blackmailed, but we want to hold you at a higher standard. We must hold the judiciary at a higher standard, the legislators at the higher standard, and make sure the president is also at the higher standard. That is how we can move as a country and stop this nonsense. We can't we behave like monkeys running through a forest looking for bananas without knowing whether it's the bananas they want or it's oranges. I really, really want to say this, Madam Speaker, finally. I was nearly giving up on my country. I have changed my mind because of today. 
The young men who are fighting for this country have done us proud. Let us treat them with dignity. Let us make sure we engage them. Let us stop doing the things which make them angry, desperate, and upset with the ruling class. How many times have I made videos talking about the speak, I mean the speeches that African leaders make and how Africans love great speeches. This man proves my point. Great speech. And he's going to get props for it everywhere. And nobody is going to say, hey, why don't we look at our own leaders and see if they're doing what he is talking about and let's get rid of them. <laughs> Please go to, go to Evans from Africa and see the whole video. The shameless, the, <laughs> this thing is beyond what people think it is. I keep repeating this over and over in all my videos about Africa. And people refuse to look at the situation. We are coming to Africa thinking that there is it's like the story I heard from when I was in Barbados, I heard the streets of New York, the streets of America actually, are paved with gold. When I arrived in New York on that day in May and drove down Fulton, the parkway from JFK to Brooklyn and I saw the condition of the streets, the houses. I asked my mom, can I go back to Barbados? I was a young kid then, but this looked nothing like what I saw and heard about America. It was like a shock to my system. And then during the next few years of experiences in America. Oh man. Nevertheless, I'm hoping that many people will watch these videos and change and stand up, start fighting for Africa. Stop telling people about your pool, telling them the truth about Africa. Stop telling people how the smiling faces of the Gambia, the smiling coast, As if it is fat, instead of just the advertising gimmick that you really don't comprehend at all. But there are people all over the world who love following, you know, that kind of uh, content. They want to live vicariously, thinking that we're they are is worse than where they want to be because some fool is telling them a story and they have no way of verifying it. What you're seeing here is the real Africa. The real Africa. And it's not just one village in Africa that's like this. There are places it's even worse than this. Try Nigeria, for instance. 
is worse than what you see in Kenya. But don't come to Africa thinking that you're leaving hell to go to heaven. Please, I beg you. Wherever you are, peace. Have a great day.